In the spirit of games, I have a project for us. This is a photo of a dartboard that I found on Pixabay, and it didn't really look like this. I cut it up. This is the photo that I found on Pixabay. And I started painting it and it was a little bit boring, which I can't do boring paintings, or I try not to. And I thought, oh, why don't we make it into a puzzle? And then paint the puzzle pieces. Now you could just paint the painting and cut out the puzzle pieces and make a collage, but I think it'd be more fun to actually just paint it as a puzzle. So I will show you what I did and then we'll get started painting. So I printed the dartboard and then I also printed this little template of a puzzle and you could just draw puzzle pieces on it. It wouldn't matter, but I thought I'm just going to go the easy way. So then I folded it so that it lined up and I took scissors and I just cut out all the pieces and that's how they ended up all cut out. So then I just drew them on Yupo and I did one other thing. I thought it would be fun to make them a little bit more three dimensional and I left one of them undone so I can show you how I did that. So I just started with um, one, of the, one of the top corners and drew a very small millimeter-ish length of a line down on all the places that I would see it. Like here you couldn't see it, and here you'd barely be able to see it. So on the places you can see it, then I would connect the lines, following kind of the curves, and then that makes the puzzle pieces have kind of a dimension. So from here on out, it's really just painting, and we just have little tiny reference photos to use. I would like to talk about the colors I want to use, and it might be easier to do it off of the uh, big paper. So for this dark gray that's kind of in the dark board and in the background, I'm going to use a combination of slate and mushroom. For the blacks, I will probably use a very dark marker plus eggplant and teak wood. It's really pretty much black, but I usually like to have color in the black instead of just flat black. For this um, back edge of the board, I've got caramel, lemonade, bottle, red pepper, and I plan to use the white pen for the silver accents. So like most other paintings, I'm going to start by just lightening the drawing. And if you haven't figured out yet, I, my plan is to not have a background. So we're just going to directly paint on white Yupo. So did I say my plan was to paint on white Yupo? It was not my plan. Okay, it was my plan, but not anymore. When I was um, using the alcohol to uh, clean off the graphite, it picked up some of the blue that was on the um, drop board. And now I have a nice blue stain over here. So I think that that is kind of unavoidable in terms of cropping because it's right in the picture frame. So it's time to make a new plan, but this is alcohol inks and we don't mind doing that. A couple options would be, one would be to mask all the pieces and drop in the background. And that, that's not a bad option. I think I will um, instead pounce on a texture with the makeup sponge and I think I can just get around all the areas. and. I need to cover this color, so I'm going to go with bottle, which is, you know, an accent color in the dark in the dark board. So I'm going to just kind of pounce. And I think I'm just gonna switch over to the masking plan. I feel like this is gonna be a lot of work. And I think this will be much faster. So I'm going to mask all the pieces and then we'll uh, come back in a minute and put in a new background. Our masking fluid is now dry, so I'm going to add in the background. And I wouldn't mind it being in this shade range and then with kind of a texture. So I've got the bottle. I'm going to actually start with a little bit of alcohol so we can lighten the green. I'm just going to drizzle it on, pop in some of the green, a little more alcohol. Let's just kind of flow it through. Okay, 
got a kind of a gradient. So I'm going to pull off this excess ink here. And I just kind of like the gradient. So I'm going to let it dry vertically this way, and that should keep the gradient. So this is our new gradient background, and I'm actually really happy with it because, you know, you can kind of see the stain a little bit, but for the most part, it just is interesting, but not, um, not going to be in the way. And now we will uh, take the masking fluid off and start painting. So I've been debating about the best way of doing this. Should I do all of the um, dark stripes and all the reds and all the greens, or just one piece at a time? And I think I'm gonna go with one piece at a time. And I have put in the Weld palette, the uh, red pepper, the lemonade, bottle, slate, and mushroom. And I will uh, just start over here. And I'm gonna start with the slate. reminds me of those little games where you um, have a grid pattern and you have to scale up the drawing or if you transfer a drawing that way which I often do when I oil paint and make the grid pattern and then draw in the grid on the really big canvases. This is the lemonade. This is the bottle. And the red pepper. And there we have one piece. I don't have room in my palette for the eggplant, so I'm going to switch over and use this dark marker. is that same combination of eggplant and teak wood.
we have one last piece to go. So now we've laid in all the initial color and that took kind of a while, but it's in. I'm going to turn it back in this orientation because that's how I drew the shading. So at this stage, we've got all the initial color laid in and we need to start to make it look a little bit better. And I am not feeling very daring today. So I have decided to do my touch up with markers and I found a bunch that are compatible. So I want to keep kind of the brushed look and I'll probably use the cotton swab and alcohol to do some lifting and blending, but I think I have actually put away the bottled ink so that I won't spill it on it. And I've also got some fine tip pens. The first thing I'm gonna do now is take a look at these dimensional edges that I put on and just kind of color them in. I'm starting with this kind of darkish brown gray shadow color. This is a kind of a darkish gray and I'm going to use it for some of these uh, the kind of dark stripes that are in the dartboard. For the lemonade, I'm just going to uh, kind of lift and blend. And this is a red marker for the reds. And the same with the green. This is kind of a golden color. It's in the caramel range. I'm going to make some adjustments based on the photographs. So this guy is a little bit lighter. This one, I'd like to add some other color in.
Now I'm going to take a pass around with a black marker and just clean up all the edges. I'm taking a darker gray marker and filling in the shadow areas again. And the other thing I'm going to do is use the white pen. And there's lots of silver on the board. to do a little design on some of these darts. more vague the better. So there's a lot more I could do to soften edges, add more color, make it look better. It looks very drawn, but I think I'm going to leave it just as is. It is an experimental puzzle piece painting and for the record it would have been much faster to just paint the painting and cut it up but this is kind of an interesting game to play <laughs>